Okay. Hello, everyone. So my name is Shadi Halu. I am a PhD student, and I am working on neurosymbolic approaches for reasoning. Mm -hmm. But uh, today I will be presenting one of uh, my pre previous previous work. Uh, so one I was a research assistant at the American University of Beirut. And so this paper is related to Arabic NLP, and it's called the semi-supervised uh, BERT approach for Arabic memory recognition. Uh, this work was in collaboration with the Department of Computer Science at the American University of Beirut. So here is the outline. First, I will introduce the problem that we tackled in this paper, which is Arabic language recognition. Second, I will discuss some of the approaches that tackle the same problem, such as machine learning-based approach, rule-based approaches, and hybrid-based approaches. Uh, third, I will explain our proposed approach based on the BERT model, which was trained in a semi-supervised fashion. And then I will discuss the data set used on the experiment. And finally, I will conclude this presentation. So in this paper, we, we tackled uh, the problem of Arabic identity recognition. So we proposed a semi-supervised uh, BERT approach to detect and classify name entities in Arabic. So what is like uh, name entity recognition? So it is a task to, to extract and locate and classify name entities in a given text. So an name entity can be a proper noun, like a person name, a name of a city. Also, it can be a numerical expression that represent a type unit, uh, type unit or monetary value, or a temporal value that represent time. So in this paper, we focus on recognizing uh, proper nouns only and classifying them into like three uh, classes, a person, a location, or an, or an organization. And the, the importance of uh, NER is that it plays a significant role in many applications such as information retrieval, information extraction, question answering, and even machine translation. So here is an example of two sentences where the name entities are labeled. So we have uh, Mahat Karolinska, it is an organization. Um, Stockholm, it is a location. Abu Khalil Kaben, it is a person. And all the non-name uh, non, non entities are labeled uh, O, or zero, uh, so it means like other. So here, like two, uh, two sentences. So uh, NER is a difficult task for Arabic. So first, there's no capitalization in Arabic script, which is commonly used uh, in non-Arabic languages such as English or French to detect uh, name entities. Second, Arabic can be ambiguous. For instance, a lot of name entities are also used as a common noun and uh, also like adjectives. Uh, third, uh, Arabic has lack like, uh, of uh, sufficient uh, resources. Such uh, resources include like data set. Uh, even if, it's, even if uh, some of these resources are present, they are like limited in scope and uh, some of them are not publicly available. So to overcome these challenges, we propose a BERT model, which was trained in a semi-supervised fashion using uh, two data sets, a small label data set and a large uh, semi-label data set. So many approaches have been proposed to tackle the problem of Arabic and YAR. These approaches can be, can be categorized like into three, uh, three main categories, uh, machine learn, learning approach, uh, rule-based approach, and hybrid-based uh, approach. Um, excuse me, Shadi, just you want to clarify, you had data sets, okay, two data sets. Yeah. And yes. one which is uh, labeled, wholly labeled, yeah. and the other one was semi-labeled. Yes. Okay, okay. No, no, so we have like, uh, so, yeah, so uh, the idea is to, to develop like an approach that can uh, use like a, a small label data set mm -hmm. and a large semi-label data set. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so it is, uh, it is a semi-supervised semi, uh, approach, but usually in semi-supervised approach, we use like labeled and unlabeled data. Yes. But here what we did, we, uh, so we created a semi-label data set and I will show you how. Okay. So now I will discuss like briefly about the related work. Like I said, so we have different uh, approaches, and most of uh, of the work done for Arabic and ER is based like on traditional machine learning algorithm uh, using like feature engineering. And the algorithm are like uh, most like CRF models and SVM models, but in deep learning we have like uh, some work. So for example, we have uh, B dash I guess use a character level network and CRF trained in a supervised fashion. Halil uh, Al-Bassouni proposed a semi-supervised learning approach based on an algorithm called co-training, which was adapted to the context of, uh, of deep learning for, uh, for the text of Arabic and ER. And so their model was based like on two by STMs. And you have uh, Antoun uh, Alpret. Uh, so they use like, they pre-train a BERT model for Arabic uh, 
text, so they called it like Annabird, which was evaluated on different tests such as uh, sentiment analysis and uh, NER. We have also many rule-based uh, approaches have been proposed for Arabic NER, like, uh, and most of these approaches that rely on like a combination of uh, features, including uh, lexical triggers, morphological analyzer, regular expression. And we have uh, the last type, which is uh, also somehow like commonly used, is uh, the hybrid approach, which combine like uh, machine learning and rule-based approaches. Okay, so now to train like uh, to train like a robust model for Arabic and AR using deep learning, we need uh, like you know like a large training data set. So given the lack of such data in the case of Arabic, we propose like a semi-supervised learning approach, and our approach is based on. Um, teacher-student learning mechanism, and it was inspired by the work of uh, Neil Nisi Al from Facebook, who, uh, so they created like this model for image classification. And we, adapt, we adapted it to uh, Arabic numerity equation. So, uh, so the core model used in our approach is a pre-trained Arabic word model called Arabert, which was, like I said before, like it was developed by Antoine Al. It is based on a transformer architecture called Bert, which was uh, created by Devlin Al. And the BERT model like, consists of a stack of transformers, which was pre-trained on two tasks, uh, mask language modeling and next sentence prediction. So what is like mask uh, language modeling? It consists of training the model to predict a mask word, giving the other words in a sentence, while the, ne while the task of next sentence prediction like, consists of uh, training uh, the model to learn, like let's say, the relationship between two sentences. Mm -hmm. So by taking, for example, as input sentence A and sentence B and predict if sentence B follows sentence A. So the Arabic model was pre-trained on a large data set, which consists of uh, the Arabic Wikidops, 1.5 billion words Arabic corpus, or same corpus, and the news websites such, such as Lakhbar and Nah. So like I said, in our approach, we use two data sets. We use like a like I said, a small label data set, the data set used in our case is called Anercop, and here is an example. And uh, the other uh, data set is a semi uh, label data set, which was developed uh, by Halwe and Bassouni. So, so, uh, so this data set was automatically generated from uh, Wikipedia. And here, is an, uh, here is an example of the data set. And we can notice that, for example, here, not all, uh, all the entities are labeled. So, for example, in the first sentence, which says that Walati Tanzimuha Shirk Tayran Asia Rahla Muvesha Ben Nakida Wa Kuala Lumpur. So, Tayran Asia is labeled, but uh, for example, Nakida and Kuala Lumpur are not. Yes, these two so, names are not labeled. Yeah, so see, these two tokens are not labeled and should be should be labeled as location. But like I said, because uh, we generated like automatically the data set, uh, so not everything is labeled. Yes. So, okay, so like I said, so this data set first was, so I created this data set during my master thesis. So this data set was automatically generated by randomly selecting Wikipedia articles and using an LSTM neural network uh, to annotate all the entities that have like, for example, a hyperlink to another Wikipedia page. So this model takes as input the summary of an entity Wikipedia article and classify it into one of the four classes, for example, uh, person, location, organization, or other. So if you want, like, let's look like at uh, this figure. Uh, so we wrote like a script that scan a Wikipedia article to find tokens that have like a week, uh, that have like another, uh, that, that link to another Wikipedia page. So in this example, so we generally, let's say, retrieve the Wikipedia page of Steve Jobs. And here, like this, uh, the script, uh, uh, found like for example two uh, two uh, two tokens that have uh, that have like a Wikipedia uh, article uh, that link to a Wikipedia article, and so for instance here we have San Francisco and California, and so uh, the script that we wrote will directly uh, retrieve the article and will give the uh, the summary which is the first paragraph of the article to the LSTM and the LSTM will label it as location and same for California. So now we know, we know that the San Francisco and California uh, are, li are labeled as location, but we, we can have like other uh, uh, tokens that are not labeled. For example, here, uh, I guess uh, Paul and Clara jobs are not labeled because we don't have like a 
Wikipedia page uh, for them. Okay. Now, uh, so this figure represents like a summary of our semi-supervised approach. So in our approach, we make use of two data sets, one that is fully labeled and one that is partially labeled. And uh, so first what we do, we train a teacher model, which in our case is a BERT model and specifically is Arabert uh, with a limit, uh, limited uh, label data set. And second, what we do, we predict uh, the labels of the non-labeled tokens of the semi-labeled data set using a word like teacher model. So for example, so we have here Zidane, Mudarib, Real Madrid. Real Madrid uh, is labeled, but Zidane and Mudarib are not. So our teacher model will label them. And they, uh, so it will label like Zidane as a person and Mudarib as other because it's not a name entity. Uh, so it's not a name entity. And third, what we do, we compute the confidence score of each sentence and we check if it is higher like uh, than a predefined threshold. So we have a threshold if it is higher. So if the condition is met, we pick the best instances from the data annotated by the teacher model. And, okay, sorry. Okay, so what is, uh, so what is the confidence score? So the confidence, uh, so confidence score is, is a simple, uh, so the confidence score of a sentence is just a simple average of the probabilities of uh, of the non-labeled tokens. So, for example, because here uh, the model labeled Zidane and Mudarib, so we just take the, the average of Zidane to be a person and uh, Mudarib to be an other. And so this this what this is what the confidence score, just a simple average. So we we then um, so we pick like uh, so we try so we pick the best sentences. And we train another model, um, which is, we called it like the student model. And it has the same architecture as the BERT model. And so after training using this data set, we fine tune, so finally we fine tune this student model using the, semi, the small label data set. So first we, like I said, we train the teacher model, we predict uh, uh, the data of the non-labeled tokens, we choose the best instances, we train the student model using the best of them. And then finally, we find tune using the label data set. So to evaluate, uh, sorry, to first to train and validate, we use an ERCO uh, data set. Uh, we use a semi-labeled uh, data set during, uh, during training. For uh, testing, we use three data set, uh, which are like ACMOD, uh, the news data set, and the tweets data set. So we evaluated uh, our approach, which we called it uh, right, the Arabic uh, semi-supervised uh, model against like different uh, Arabic and your tools and approaches. And so the tools are Madamira and Parasa, which uh, I guess they used uh, SDM, uh, SDM models. And, uh, and the other approaches are deep co-learning and we also test, we, we, we trained like an Arabic version, trained only on like on the small label data set without uh, the semi-supervised uh, semi uh, technique. Uh, so to- Sadi, yeah. uh, Sadi, but uh, no one has done before BERT or any transformer on this, uh, the Arabic uh, data set, right? So no, so, so we have like already a model that was pre-trained for like different tasks. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yes, one of yes. them is name entity governance. But what we did, we use this data set, uh, so this model, and we fine tune it on our own data set. Yeah, but Madamira and Farasa models are. So they are like, uh, they use like SVM models. So oh, okay. they use like feature engineering plus, uh, plus I guess, uh, if I'm not wrong, like SVM. Yes. So like, we can say, we can say like uh, Farasa and Madamira used uh, traditional uh, machine learning uh, approaches. Deep co-learning use uh, it is a semi-supervised uh, learning approach, but uh, but it used like uh, an ensemble of two by STM. And here we have BERT. One is only uh, trained on the semi-labeled data set, and, and the other using the semi-supervised technique. Okay, it is clear, or like you want like to repeat? No, no. It's fine. It's it's very clear. No, so so uh, as 
we can see from the table, uh, Madame and Fas uh, are very low. Uh, so here we are using F major, okay, to, to compute. So we use we use the script uh, used only for name entity recognition. We use a script that can compute all uh, the scores, and I choose like uh, an F major. So Madame and and Fas have uh, very low uh, F measures. One is twenty nine point two. The other is fifty two point nine. The deep co-learning is better than the BERT, which was only trained on the semi-label data set, so 61.8 and 61.5. And why uh, it's better? Because here, like, uh, they're using the same uh, lab semi-label data set that we use and it's a semi-supervised learning approach. But our approach got like 65.5, which outperforms uh, all others. And we got same results on the news bench benchmark. Uh, so we got 78.6. And uh, deep colony got 74.1. And train only on, on uh, the semi label data set got 70, uh, 73.2. But only on this data set, which is a tweet data set, the deep colony approach has uh, the highest score, which is better than our approach. And we believe that, uh, that the reason behind uh, this result is that the Arabic model was pre-trained on what we called modern standard uh, Arabic corpora. And so this corpora usually is, is uh, different like in nature from tweets. So, so usually, uh, usually when we say like Arabic is written like in, uh, in modern standard Arabic, so it means that there are no mistakes, no misspellings. So it's like, uh, uh, it's correct. So. But, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so and because, because, like I said, the Arabic was not pre trained on the tweets, for example, and tweets can like mostly like uh, contain uh, misspellings and mistakes. So we believe that because of this, uh, we got like low, low score. And uh, the problem that, uh, that, sorry, sorry, I just for clarification, I don't understand how do you compare between between different algorithms, what are these log, org, and ter? Uh, what are these numbers? I, I, I didn't get it. Uh, so it's, it's the F measure. So, so here like uh, the F measure compute like the average between all the entities that are labeled, for example, location, organization, and person. Okay, so it's an F measure. So, so the script that we, we use uh, give all, all of these results and give like the average, which uh, which is the most important thing that we have to look at it. And uh, yeah, so it's a, yeah, so it is like a script uh, that can evaluate uh, the predictions that we are making with our model and, and gives as a result uh, enough measure. It is clear or like, do you want me to repeat? Uh, no, it's clear, I guess, but just for example, localization, what, what does it mean, localization means? Okay, okay, so, so for example, like I said, we have like, because you have three classes, you have location, organization, and person. So the model has to predict those three. So the script will only look at these three classes. So we are not evaluating on other classes. We can, we can evaluate on other classes, but we, because our main um, things that we are looking at is if, if the model can predict on this, uh, these three classes, location, organization, and person. It's clear. Or do you want like to give like an example? Maybe let's say, uh, for example here, for example here, because this is allocation, organization, and person. So the model, so the script will look only as at these if they are correct or not. Uh, um, I, um, okay, guys, I just want to. Okay so, okay, so for the last data set, which is a tweet data set, so only on this. Data set the colonic approach has uh, a higher score, which is better than our approach. And the reason behind this result is that, like, uh, maybe because Arabic model was pre trained on modern standard Arabic corpora and which highly differ in nature from like tweets. And because in this data set, the tweets are mostly in Egyptian dialect and contain like uh, mistakes and misspellings. So now to conclude, uh, so finally to conclude, we proposed the semi-supervised word approach to detect and classify uh, name entities in Arabic text. Our model outperforms all uh, other Arabic uh, NER tools and approaches on two testing data sets, the Akmar and the news data set. 
And in the future, like we plan like to pre-train the bot model on tweets to make it more suitable for text that could contain like misspellings and mistakes. And like I said before, because uh, because like uh, uh, such data sets are not like written in uh, modern uh, standard Arabic. And also we plan like to apply our approach on other NLP tasks, such as part of, uh, of speech tagging and for example, dependency parsing. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> So, yeah, if you have now any question. Uh, so guys, uh, I guess Shadi has, uh, is done with her uh, presentation. Yeah. Uh, I guess it summed up uh, very nice ideas and very nice contributions to the field. And um, I would like to, uh, to have your opinion. Uh, Hadi, Musa, uh, the NLP specialist here, Imal, Lino and Ahmed. Uh, yes, for me, I have maybe two questions. Yeah, sure. The first one, you have shown us the results for, for your model, like uh, using BERT with, with Arabic. Is there any work doing the same architecture model with other languages like English and uh, so on? And so for, yeah. yeah sure. it, if yes, uh, the accuracy will be better in English or it's uh, comparable? Okay, great. So yes, and uh, especially in English, yeah. We have like uh, only models that can achieve like uh, high uh, performance on, uh, on English. And yeah, it's better than Arabic because like, uh, because by nature, English is easier than Arabic. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, for example, uh, like I said, one problem with Arabic is capitalization. So, which means that uh, uh, like names in English begins with a capital letter, and we don't have like this in Arabic. And also in Arabic, we, we tend like to to name person. So, for example, Jamil is an adjective, but also it can be a person name. Yes. And, and we yeah. don't have like this these problems in English and other other like uh, languages like French. So, yeah. Yes, so it's still like an Arabic more difficult. Like sense. a single name can have many functions, an adjective or a name. Yes. Yeah, yes, so, so yes. How, how much gap do we have in the uh, final accuracy? Or? Sorry? Uh, how, how much gap do we have between... Uh, uh, to, be, to be honest, I'm not sure, but I guess we have a like, uh, great gap because here, like I said, we got uh, around like the best on the best data set, we got 78. I guess uh, in English, we can easily achieve like 90, 90%. Okay, perfect. And also another question you said uh, for the data set of tweets, the, the co-learning, the deep co-learning was the best. Uh, for the pre-trained data set of deep co-learning, it was different from your pre-trained data set or? Yeah, yeah, so it was, uh, yes, I guess in uh, deep co-learning, uh, the embeddings uh, used is, I guess, word to vec. Uh, I'm not sure if, I guess, maybe it was pre-trained on different different, uh, different data sets. And also, um, yeah, so also maybe maybe the architecture of deep coroning, uh, it is based, it's basically a by STM. But mm -hmm. in addition to by STM, the, uh, so, so the deep coroning approach also use, I guess, um, uh, so a CRF, CRF model. So, so it's a Bayesian plus CRF model, if I'm not wrong. And uh, we didn't like uh, in BERT, we didn't like uh, play with architecture. We didn't like add, uh, an, uh, let, let's say, uh, another layer uh, after like, uh, let's say after the BERT model, like the core architecture, we didn't add. So we didn't try to, to play with architecture, but in, but in deep learning, uh, so, so, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, engineering into uh, the kind of the, into the architecture. So okay, yeah. different different things were were tried to to uh, to have like the best model the deep learning. Okay. Yeah, so the deep learning is, is it was my master thesis when I was working on uh, I was working on name entity recognition and we developed the deep learning approach. But like I said, we developed we tested a lot of things. So CR. Uh, and I guess if I'm not uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, what I remember is that we used to finally like a a bias plus CRF model. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. 
Shadi. Yes. Um, I have a question. Actually, you, you, you explained your uh, semi-supervised approach, but you didn't actually explain how, how, uh, how you fine-tuned BERT on, on the downstream task. Um, so actually, I'm, I'm not, I don't really understand or see how, how the, um, I mean, for the fine-tuning, you need to add a layer to the BERT, uh, like a classification hat. Uh, I don't, I, I don't see how how you can apply that directly using BERT, BERT uh, like models like Arabert, uh, especially that uh, as far as I understand, the Arabert um, uses byte per encoding uh, based algorithms, maybe maybe sentence piece, if not uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so some some words can be broken into pieces. Uh, and in this case, I, I don't see how, how you can apply it, it directly some, some classification had to classify the tokens into classes. Okay, so, so, okay, so basically, for, for example, for the tokenizer, uh, so the Arabert model, uh, so it gave not only the model, but also the tokenizer to tokenize the Arabic text. So we don't have like problem with uh, the tokenizer, but for the classification and for the fine tuning, we can we can uh, we can find. So what we did, we fine tune everything. We fine tune all the layer. We didn't add any classifier. We used the same class. So we used uh, so we use the same uh, same model of Arabert, but uh, as objective function is to uh, uh, to do the name entity recognition task. But we didn't like add any any new layers. We didn't even uh, so we tried to to just uh, fine tune like uh, the classifier, not 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 everything, and we didn't like get uh, good results. So we what we did we we fine tune everything even even uh, uh, even the embeddings in, in BERT and uh, yeah. So so what we did we just fine tune everything. Okay. And, and the classifier it's formed from what uh, which what layers? Uh, okay. You said that you fine tuned everything, the classifier with Arabert. But yes, uh, I, I think I don't know what is the classifier is from the from what really. No, I yeah. think I think the classifier is basically a, a classification had on top of of Bert of Arabert. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. And and the whole model is fine tuned, not just right. the class, not just not, the classifier. Yeah, we 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 tested like uh, we tested this uh, approach, but uh, we didn't achieve like uh, good results. So uh, we said, okay, why not like to, to try and fine tune everything, and and we achieved like uh, we achieved like good result using this. Yes, uh, I mean this is the let's say the standard approach with uh, with the bird like models. You fine tune the whole model, not just uh, the the classifier. Yeah, yeah. Had. But but uh, the the other question about the tokenizer. You know, when we're using uh, BPE algorithm, one token can be broken into multiple ones. So, for yes. example, if you have your name, your name Shadi, for example, it can be broken into tokens, uh, two tokens, Sha and D. When yeah. you're applying the classification, if um, each token is classified into different, let's say, classes, um, how how do you decide if it's a, a named entity or not? So, uh, let's say Sha is it was classified as um, as a proper noun, but D was not classified as a proper noun. How do you decide uh, how to classify this this token? Yeah, I yeah, mean, you, the full name. You're right, but yes, you're right. I, I see your point. So you mean like, for example, Shadi, it's like split, but finally it will be, so you can you can look at it like as, a, uh, you can look, look at it like as a sequence to sequence. So, uh, so let's say Shadi, let's say you are translating Arabic to French. So even if it was split, let's say a name or anything that is split, uh, when it is pre-processed, it will it will not be also splitted in the output, right? So if you are translating, I'm, I'm just taking as an example as trans, uh, translation task, for example, from French to Arabic to French, let's say. Okay, so when uh, you have, for example, a name, it will maybe it will be splitted, but finally it will not be. Uh, the final output, I'm, I'm saying about the final output. So uh, I, I understand. I understand that for no. Actually, 
I understand that if it was a sequence to sequence problem, but as you're using Arabic, which is yes, just an encoded in, in this, in in this our, case. Our, yes. yes, you're right. Because in our condition, it's, it's also like a sequence to sequence. Because what we are, we are doing, finally, we are uh, outputting uh, a sequence of, uh, of entities. If it is location, it is other. So let me show you this example. Yes, yeah, so it's somehow like a sequence to sequence. Uh, so here, like, is the input and the output. It's all of these. You know, so it is a sequence to sequence. It's not like uh, Arabic to French, but it's uh, Arabic to, uh, let's say, an M entities uh, format. Okay. Okay. So we're not just taking the token and classify. It. No, we are doing a sequence to sequence. I don't really, I don't really understand the. Because you know, BERT, BERT is an encoder. So basically for each token that you have, and uh, as we said, one token uh, or one, one word can be split into two tokens. Um, in this case, BERT, it's just an encoder. So for each one of these tokens, you will have like a vector representations. So, so at the output of BERT, you will have a sequence of representation vectors. Um, that have the same length as uh, the length of the input sequence. Yes. So when, if, if for example, here Stockholm was was split into two tokens. In this case, each one of these tokens will have a vector representation, and for each vector representation, we will we will apply the classification and we will decide if it's a location or not. Uh, okay. Am I right, or uh, I'm saying I'm saying something not very accurate? So yeah, so um, to be to be honest, I'm not not sure about it. Like uh, uh, because uh, because I have to to check one thing is uh, the tokenizer because we um, I have to make sure about what is it is tokenizer. I don't remember uh, the, 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 to the tokenizer that we use because, like you said, we can we can have a tokenizer as, as split, and usually it's what we use in English. It yeah. splits somehow the word. Uh, but you know what? I have to make sure, like in Arabic, if it is the same case. I'm, to be honest, I'm, I don't remember if uh, if it if it, if it split it or not. If it really uh, cut the word or not. Uh, but yes, I have like to make sure about this. Okay. To be honest, I'm I'm not I'm not sure. But uh, so finally, what we are doing, like I said, it's like a translation. So it's a sequence to sequence, like from Arabic to French and French to Arabic. But here in our case, it's to, from Arabic to name entities. Okay. So now about the pre-processing, uh, maybe like I have to make sure because to be to be honest, I don't remember what we use as an algorithm because we we use the same uh, the same Arab bird, so we didn't really see or check what is really uh, doing in, as uh, the tokenizer, so what it does. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe I have to check that because yeah, to, to be honest, I don't remember. Okay, thank you. Um, so. Uh... Finally, thank you, Shadi, for the presentation. Uh, uh, Natasha, thank you for the invitation, and uh, and Lina, <laughs> thank you for Mavari for for hosting. Maybe thank you, Musa, for coming. Uh, you. Your opinion matters a lot. Thank you very much. M maybe maybe I will have to leave in two or three minutes. So I'm sorry for leaving a bit uh, early. It's okay. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for you. thank you for joining us. Okay. Bye. 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 Uh, so, uh, I guess, um, okay, so Musa, um, is gone, I guess? Okay. No, I'm still here for two minutes. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yes, so, uh, as uh, Iman has uh, proposed earlier, we're going to have the, uh, tour de role questions. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Ahmad. Uh, hello, Shadi. Thank you for your presentation. In fact, um, I don't have any questions. Maybe uh, the discussion between you and Musa clarified some points, and uh, it is a fruitful work. And hope to see maybe someone will come later to complete this work with better models, maybe better approaches. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully. Uh, and we have Iman. Uh, maybe I have some. Uh, simple or stupid questions, since I, it's my first time to see 
these kinds of topics. So maybe uh, first, uh, why the name of your topic was semi-supervised uh, algorithm? Because you are using semi-labeled data sets? Yeah, so uh, in fact, uh, when we say semi-supervised is, um, is when we have like a labeled and uh, unlabeled data. So when we are training using labeled and unlabeled data. But in other case, because uh, I guess maybe in Arabic, we are the first to, to use what we called a semi-labeled data set. So we are, not, we are not using really fully unlabeled data set, we're using a semi-labeled data set. But for the name, <laughs> so we, we called it semi-supervised because we don't know what we call the exactly. approach. But it is somehow a semi-supervised learning approach. It, I, can I, be, it can be also called, maybe we, we can call it a semi-weekly label. Uh, sorry, semi-weekly uh, learning approach because uh, somehow the label data set in our case, the semi-label data set is somehow, uh, it is somehow uh, weekly label. Mm. So, yeah, but for the name, uh, yeah, we, we, we didn't have like a better term. Okay, I see. I was just wondering when I saw the, the title. Uh, my other question is just uh, maybe a stupid one, but okay. I don't know about what, what, what does it mean, a masked word or a masked language. What do you mean yeah, by it? So, you mentioned okay. that and I, I'm not familiar with that. Vocabulary, so I want to know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, in, so what is, um, okay, to, so to train like a BERT model, to pre-train a BERT model, mm -hmm. uh, what, what uh, and to learn like uh, this representation, uh, BERT used two techniques. One is mask uh, language uh, modeling and the other is next sentence prediction. So uh, to learn like this repre representation, they, they, let's say, they took a corpus from, let's say, Wikipedia, and mm -hmm. they randomly like uh, mask some words, okay? okay? And once they mask some word, the goal, so during pre-training, pre so the model has to learn to, to predict the correct word. Okay. Okay? So for example, uh, Paris is the capital of, it was masked, it should, it should be learned, it should learn that Paris is the capital of France. Okay. And using this technique, it will learn like a representation. It will learn like, okay, Paris and uh, France, they are like somehow related. Related, okay. Ne and the next sentence prediction, so they use, like I said, two techniques. One is mask language modeling and the other uh, sentence, uh, uh, and the other technique is the next sentence prediction. Yeah. So what they did, like they yeah. took two sentences and, and see if they are related or not. Okay. Uh, let's say an example, uh, let's say, uh, okay. Uh, Maybe go to and then you would expect work because maybe or school or somehow some place. So maybe let's say, like for example, uh, this is the capital of France, and you have another sentence I, uh, I ate pizza. Okay, they are not related, you know. So, so the model has to know that these two sentences are not related to, to each oh, other. Okay. But maybe Paris is the capital of France and uh, 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 Champs Elysees is in Paris. They are somehow related. So I'm, I'm giving a simple example, but it's not really like this. Uh, but usually it check if two, two sentences are, uh, are connected to each other or not. Okay, I, I'm asking these questions because we, we, we saw your work, but we didn't go into the details of the algorithm, how the learning was done. That's why it was a bit weird for me. I guess you, your work is very heavy, but you uh, presented it in, in a simple way, which is good. Uh, but inside the learning algorithm, um, I'm really interested to see how the learning is done. So maybe you can, we can do in the future another presentation about the learning yeah. itself. Yeah. For them. So, so to, to tell you, like the Arab model, uh, it was not really, it was not my, my model. So I didn't create some Arab models. Mm -hmm. That team at UB uh, developed the Arab model. Mm -hmm. And we use their model in our uh, approach using the semi supervised learning approach. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. These are my questions. Okay, great. <laughs> um, okay, so as uh, Iman has proposed, maybe next time we can have uh, more in-depth description of uh, the BERT model, for example, if it's, it was requested by uh, uh, many people. So we can get in-depth in this presentation. Um, ha Shadi, I... Um, I guess, um, Hadi, do you have any question to ask? Mm, yes, uh, thank you, Shadi, for uh, the presentation. 
Um, I just want to ask you again about uh, the classification head used because as we know, usually we have the pre-trained BERT model and then we have on top of it a classification head and we fine tune the whole model. Um, but I didn't, I, I don't know if I miss it, but uh, I didn't recall that I see details about uh, the classification head. Yeah, yeah, so we could, because I love it, but we used, we used, we didn't like, like I said before, we didn't play in the architecture. We didn't modify anything in the architecture. We, we just like uh, train in a different way. But uh, for the classifier, it is like a sequence classifier. So it, it will take, like I said, the input, which is uh, the sentence, and the output will be the same uh, size of the input, but uh, with name entities. So we didn't, like I said, we didn't really modify anything in the model. So we took it like it is, and we, we used uh, our approach. So we didn't modify, so we didn't really dig into how we can make it better, maybe later okay. on, but that was not our, uh, our goal, uh, so our goal was really how we can deal with the problem with the, uh, with uh, lacking the data set lacking uh, in language recognition because we have this problem. Uh, a lot of problems, a lot of problems in Arabic is because of the data set and we cannot yeah, make all the uh, tasks like in English because we have lack of data set. And the goal, really, the goal in our case, really how we can deal with this problem using a semi-supervised learning approach and using a Semi-label data set, but for the model, we didn't really modify anything with the model. We took it like it is, and we uh, and we used our approach. Yeah. Okay. So basically, just use uh, you import BERT and then you input the sequence, and then you just uh, use an objective function to retrain everything. Right. Okay. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, Shadi, I have a question regarding um, if someone is interested in learning, uh, um, in knowing actually more about uh, uh, NLP for Arabic named entity recognition, other than the article that you have written and the articles that you have listed, uh, do you have any reference for this, uh, uh, for this field or uh, do you suggest anything for reading? Because there are many people who are uh, currently interested in uh, knowing about this, especially as we know, we have social media and people would like to process the text available in social media. So uh, what do you suggest? What do you propose? So yeah, so uh, there are a lot of work. And what I can uh, tell you about like, is to check uh, the workshop of Arabic NLP. So this work was uh, published in um, in, uh, in the workshop of Arabic NLP, and every year we have this workshop. Mm -hmm. And so, if someone like really want to see what is happening in the field, it's better like to check the conference uh, or the workshop, because uh, because a lot of things that uh, that are nice. So I guess, for example, now uh, I guess they are a team at the UB. They are like uh, they develop uh, the same team that develops the Arab bird develop like the GPT two for Arabic, which is uh, which is amazing. So now we have like a GPT-2 for like Arabic. Cool. Uh, but if, uh, if, if anyone really want to, uh, to, to to try, like to see what's happening in the field, I guess the best thing I can tell you is like to go to, to see what's happening in the workshop uh, and a lot of stuff. Shadi, so, uh, do we have yeah. a data set in Arabic that is really compatible with the GPT-2 huge architecture? Uh, uh, so for, for the data set, because, because BERT and GPT-2 are trained, like, uh, they're not, they do not need to be like super, so do not need like a uh, code. Yeah. Because BERT was trained uh, without like having a label data set. Just like, um, like I said, uh, uh, predicting the next sentence or like randomly um, mask some words and predict uh, this word. But uh, yeah, we have a lot of corpus, but they're not right, labeled. Okay. And GPT-2 was trained in the same way as that, I guess, that was trained BERT. But we have like a huge data set. They use maybe like uh, Wikipedia, uh, Arabic Wikipedia, and a lot of stuff. But, uh, but we still have the problem of having, uh, in any task, in any Arabic task, to have like a labeled data set. So we have, we always have this problem, not only in Arabic, Sure, in your field, uh, I guess, uh, in your area also, you might have this problem, but yes, in Arabic, uh, it's common. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so uh, as promised, this this discussion was not too long. Uh, thank you, Shadi, for this amazing presentation. Uh, we were greatly introduced to this field. Uh, as you know, we have already mentioned that we are from different fields, from diverse fields. So uh, some ideas were uh, were new. And thank you so much for this presentation. Hope to see okay. you soon next time. Thank you.